Hello there, Mad Monk here again. Uh, we're, we're going to uh, finish with our discussion of the Shamana Fala Sutra or the Shamana Fala Blueprint, uh, Fruits of the Life of a Recluse, which is Diganakaya 2. This is part 6. And uh, so after continuing on with uh, the Heavenly Ear and... Um, and so forth from from our last video now here we have the heavenly eye mentioned and it uh, says here the fall and rise of beings I'm gonna write read you a little bit from this um, with the pure heavenly eye surpassing that of men he sees beings as they pass away from one form of existence and take shape take shape in another he recognize, recognizes the mean and the noble the well-favored and the ill-favored, ill the happy and the wretched, passing away according to their deeds. Such and such beings, evil in act and word and thought, holding to wrong views, acquiring for themselves that karma which results from wrong views, on the dissolution of the body after death, are reborn in some unhappy state of suffering or woe. But other beings, well-doers in act and word and thought, holding to right views, are reborn in some happy state in heaven. This is an immediate fruit of the life of a recluse, visible in this world and higher and sweeter than the last. Now again, um, well, well, we'll have to discuss uh, uh, heaven, the concept of heaven. That's going to be coming up uh, um, in a while here when we discuss um uh, basically, the Buddhist cosmology, I think, is is how I phrased it. Um, so we'll discuss what heaven is. But in any case, this is basically saying that you know, good karma results, and you're going to some sort of a heaven between lives, and um, and evil karma uh, causes you to be reborn in an unhappy state of suffering or or woe. So uh, the the Buddha or an arhat who attains enlightenment or who is close to it and able to uh, achieve the four jhanas can direct his mind his or her mind uh, to the heavenly eye and can see these beings as they're you know born and uh, live according to their karma and as they then die and and go on to uh, uh, the the life between lives uh, where there's heavens and hells and so forth um, so now I've got down here DN9, which is for Diga Nikaya 9, which is uh, translated as the soul theory. And that's an interesting point in and of itself, because basically the Buddha says that this idea of people having a soul is simply a theory. And, uh, and that there's no, basically no substance to it. Um, but in any case, uh, in, in that sutra, this... Uh, Basically, uh, you know, the, basically the Shamana Fala blueprint is repeated in Diga Nikaya 9, the soul theory, um, as it is, uh, as I've mentioned, in 10 or 15 other sutras. And in the soul theory, this is the only one of these 10 or 15 versions of the, store, of the blueprint that mentions um, any of the jhanas 5, 6, 7, or 8. You know, the most of them jump directly from, you know, reaching the fourth jhana and then through all the various miracles and psychic powers and so forth, and then to the, the destruction of the taints and nibbana. But in the soul theory, the Buddha does mention jhanas 5, 6, and 7, which are, you know, the, the consciousness of, uh, or the concentration upon space as being infinite. And then, con as as um, of consciousness as being infinite is the sixth jhana, and the void or nothingness, the the concept, the the thought that that, that nothing is real um, at the core, um, that is the seventh. And so those um, five, six, and seventh jhanas are mentioned in the soul theory, but that's the only place in any of these blueprints when those where those are mentioned. And even even here, even in the soul theory, the eighth 
uh, which is uh, neither consciousness nor not consciousness. That's the eighth um, of the jhanas. That one isn't even mentioned in the soul theory, let alone anywhere in the other uh, versions of the blueprint. So, you know, you can take that for what it's worth, but I, it seems to, seems to point to me to the fact, as I believe I've mentioned previously, that uh, y you perhaps can get to Nibbana and reach the end of the of the journey without bothering, so to speak, with genres 5, 6, 7, and 8. You perhaps 1 through 4 and then jumping on, uh, even skipping, practicing most of those miracles and so forth, you could probably leap to Nibbana uh, much more quickly. And it does not seem as if uh, the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th jhanas are necessary in order to reach Nibbana. So, in any case, in, in, uh, in this blueprint now, uh, whether or not the, uh, the, the, the Arupa or non-form jhanas are mentioned, um, either way, next, after the heavenly eye, comes the destruction of the taints. Uh, we've mentioned the taints before, that's the three deadly taints or the three deadly floods, and uh, those are desire and becoming, which is to say the desire to continue to be reborn, the desire to become, and then also ignorance. And those once those taints are destroyed in, um, uh, you know, basically moving beyond the fourth jhana um, and concentrating on destroying the taints and uh, using your psychic power at least to the point of where you uh, reach beyond ignorance and uh, and uh, go ahead and and finally reach Nibbana or Nirvana um, of course we you know anyone watching this video is probably about the same as me which is to say uh, what would seem to be millions of miles away from Nibbana or Nirvana but in any case, that's that's the goal. That's the end of the path, and uh, the Buddha describes this uh, um, in the following words. Here he says, um, uh, "In him thus set free, there arises the knowledge of his emancipation, and he knows rebirth has been destroyed. The higher life has been fulfilled. What had to be done has been accomplished." After this present life, there will be no beyond. Um, I just want to add on there. Now, this is definitely purely within the Theravana tra tradition. Um, the expectation that once one reaches Nibbana, then that's, um, that's basically the end of that being. That's the end of that set of karmas that were working their way through... Uh, through ex through through existence um but then the the mahayana buddha um mahayana buddhist teachings up in china um and japan and Korea, the koreas they believe that um that it's you know that it's better to come back again and again and be reborn and attain enlightenment again and again, and to help other people attain freedom as you're doing that. Um, so that's, that's just an extra twist on the whole thing. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye now.